Lizzie Borden took an axe and gave her mother 40 wax. When she saw what she had done, she gave her father 41. You may know the rhyme, but can you separate the truth from fiction? Contrary to the poem, Lizzie Borden gave her parents a total of 29 wax. Welcome to Watch Mojo's Top 5 Facts and our special series on famous murderers. For this list, we'll be counting down the most fascinating facts surrounding the 1892 murders of Borden family patriarch Andrew and his wife Abby, crimes long thought to be committed by the Borden's daughter, Lizzie. Did you kill father? Number 5. Lizzie had an odd alibi. Lizzie, please. You always frighten me when you get like this. Murder suspects usually try to have a story and stick to it, yet Lizzie's discussions with the police were nothing if not inconsistent and suspicious. She was home during both murders, yet claimed not to hear or see a thing. Abby Borden's murder took place at around 9.30 a.m. At a time when Lizzie's sister Emma was out of town, family friend John Morse was visiting relatives, and Borden maid Bridget Sullivan was outside washing windows. An invading intruder would have had to have remained hidden for about 90 minutes in the Borden's relatively small house in order to butcher Andrew Borden undetected at approximately 11 a.m. Lizzie's alibi that she was in the barn loft during this time proved odd when visiting police uncovered no footprints and also found the unventilated area stiflingly hot, certainly unfit for a 90-minute stay. Number 4. Andrew Borden's death wasn't all that surprising. Andrew Borden's frugality as a businessman was well documented in the family's home of Fall River, Massachusetts. We've already mentioned that the Borden family home was small given Andrew's self-made fortune, but does anyone ever get rich without making their fair share of enemies along the way? Do you have any idea how much your father was worth? The relationship between Andrew, Lizzie, and Emma is also thought to have been complicated by the father's second marriage to Abby in 1865. The sisters reportedly preferred to refer to her as Mrs. Borden as opposed to Mother. This house! Lord, how I hate this house! Lizzie and Emma's status as unmarried women in their 30s also labeled them as spinsters during this era, which could have also increased tensions within the household. I'm suffocating. Father, look at me! I'm 32 and practically a prisoner in this ugly old house. Still, this didn't stop the siblings from inheriting Andrew's fortune after his death, with Lizzie eventually becoming a somewhat infamous local celebrity after her trial. Number 3. The coroner didn't write the rhyme, apparently. Speaking of the trial, the skulls of Abby and Andrew Borden made a shocking appearance in front of the Massachusetts jury, but the remains didn't feature the sort of axe wounds one might expect from Lizzie's infamous rhyme. Instead, the murder weapon was likely a small hatchet, used to deliver approximately 19 blows to Abby and 10 or 11 to Mr. Borden. These blows were quite gruesome and forceful, however, severely damaging the father's head and face. This shocking violence caused quite a commotion in the crowd, as well as a swoon by Lizzie in the court. <gasps> Although the accused did not take the stand in her own defense, she didn't even need to in the end. The jury of 12 men only deliberated for about 90 minutes before returning a not guilty verdict. Not guilty. <laughs> Number 2. There was a distinct lack of evidence during the trial. The only thing that matters is the evidence. <laughs> Criminal forensics such as fingerprinting were in their infancy during the time of the Warden murders. Although her failed attempt to purchase poison from the local apothecary in the days prior to the murder did raise some eyebrows. Miss Borden asked to buy 10 cents worth of prussic acid. Naturally, I informed her we did not sell prussic acid unless by a physician's prescription. The crime scene was also severely compromised from the get-go, as police and curious neighbors trampled all over the Borden home, corrupting anything which might have been considered useful evidence. The only hatchet found on the Borden property was broken and clear of any stains while a dress that police would have admitted as evidence was conveniently burned by Lizzie prior to her trial. Lizzie, what are you going to do? I'm going to burn this old thing. It's covered with paint. Lizzie's gender might have also played a role in her acquittal, as female murder suspects were practically unheard of around this time, especially gruesomely violent ones. Lizzie's defense attorney used this to their advantage and referenced her upstanding reputation in the community as a way of circumventing a guilty verdict. To find her guilty, you must believe her to be a fiend. Does she look it? Number 1. 
you can stay at the Lizzie Borden bed and breakfast. Ooh, she's gonna get you. <laughs> Shut up. <laughs> The actual Borden home is still standing on 2nd Street in Fall River and exists as an operating bed and breakfast dedicated to preserving the historical significance of the Lizzie Borden case for all who care to visit. The establishment is proudly staffed by experts on the case, complete with original artifacts and even gift shop DVDs and collectibles. Lizzie's informed she's a suspect in the crime by the city marshal, Rufus Hilliard and the mayor of Fall River, John Coughlin. The place is usually booked solid during the Halloween season, as well as the anniversary of the murders, but is readily available at other times. The house has proven to be a popular spot for many aspiring ghost hunters and tourists coming through town with some of the construction and materials inside dating back to Andrew's original design. Just don't be alarmed if you happen to hear footsteps in the hall or the sound of a hatchet cutting through the night air. Are you sure there's nobody else in the house? So, do you think Lizzie Borden was guilty of the crime? And could you handle a stay at that murderous bed and breakfast? This has something to do with your freaky fetish for, for serial killers. For more staffed by experts top 10s and enemies along the way top 5s, be sure to subscribe to WatchMojo.com.